with the release of Star Wars Battlefront drawing closer and closer, EA and DICE have released some more detailed information on the customization and diversity of the content in the game, and today we're going to be looking at all of the weapons, the primary weapons so far that have been confirmed for the release of the game. Starting briefly with ones we already know about, just to get them out of the way real quick. We have the standard Rebel Blaster, the A280C, the standard Imperial Blaster, the E11, the DLT-19, and the DH-17 Blaster Pistol. All of these were in the beta of the game and were progressively unlocked the more XP or in-game coins you earned up to the max level of 5. I assume this is the way the system will work for all primary weapons in the game, although that hasn't been confirmed. It could be like the Battlefield series, where some weapons require the completion of an assignment to unlock them. You never know. I ranked all of these blasters in a previous video as well, so if you missed that, click the button in the top right hand corner now. Moving swiftly on to some more interesting weapons, which will no doubt be unlocked the more you play the game. First up, we have the EE-3 Blaster, which is perhaps most famous for being Boba Fett's weapon of choice in almost every appearance that he made in the films. The Blaster will come with a three-round burst fire mode for longer range accuracy and comes with a built-in scope. So this thing is probably perfect if you're one of those players who likes to take out longer range targets. Next, and this is rather an interesting one, we have the Bowcaster. In the most recent info drop, it was being used by a rebel soldier during the Battle of Endor, and as described, depending on the charge time given to the weapon, you're able to fire multiple explosive arrows across the battleground. And if you look at the picture closely, you'll see there are three scopes attached to this weapon as well. Maybe this links to the different charge times you could select? Who knows right now, but mainly it just looks cool, so I'll probably be using it quite a lot. Following the Bowcaster, we have a set of pistols, and I want to look at these sort of as a group. First of all, we have the DL-44, which is most notable for its appearance with Han Solo pretty much all of the time. And actually, the weapon is unlocked as standard if you pre-order the Digital Deluxe Edition of the game. This blaster gives the holder absolutely massive damage potential at close range, which is kind of the same as the DH-17, although that thing just fired a bit faster and did less damage, so it's pretty clear that they're trying to make the pistols work at close range. Alongside those, we have the Scout Pistol, and as you'd expect, following in the footsteps of the other two, great close range damage output, but that evaporates very quickly when you aim at longer range. And finally, we have the SE-14C, which is a game built for close quarters battles, but features a five round burst fire mode. Providing it fires those in quick succession, then that's a weapon I'm going to be grinding for straight away. And up next, perhaps my favourite of all of the blasters that were revealed yesterday, we have this. The DTL-20A Pulse Cannon. Yep, you guessed it, it's a sniper rifle. If any of you have been watching my channel for a while, you know I have a soft spot for pretty much any weapon that even closely resembles a sniper rifle, and it's no different here. The barrel reminds me of the 300 Knockout from Battlefield Hardline, actually, which in itself is loosely modelled off of the Remington MSR. But what really intrigues me is the way in which the blaster operates. It's very similar to the Bowcaster. Depending on how much time you charge up the weapon for, you'll do more or less damage. So if you want to smash a distant Stormtrooper's helmet off, then you'll want to charge up good and proper. But if the target is a little bit closer, then maybe you won't have to charge as much. This kind of mechanic ultimately gives you several ways to play with that kind of weapon, and depending on how far away you want to be from the action will depend on how many people you can kill in quick succession. If you want to get involved with the battle that's going on on the ground, and you're in close quarters, you might do less damage but kill more people, depending on how much damage you actually do, or if you want to play on Endor and sit up in the Ewok village in the trees, then you can do that as well. I'm really looking forward to using this weapon. And propping up the pack, we have three completely opposite weapons, but they all share one common feature, and that's damage. 
First up is the CA-87 blaster, which is basically the shotgun model of the group, which provides massive damage at close range, but is next to useless at doing anything else. And then we also have the RT-97C blaster, which is an LMG-style weapon, similar to the DLT that we had in the beta, but it's slightly more focused to longer range combat due to its included optic sight. And finally, the T-21 blaster, which is much more focused on long range combat because it can do massive damage at the same time. This one doesn't come with a built-in optic though, which could make it difficult to hit those long range targets. So that's your lot, the primary weapons of Star Wars Battlefront, or at least the ones that we know about so far. EA and DICE did say last week that there would be regular content drops in the form of DLC, we already knew that, but along with that DLC, there will be weapons in there, so each time there's a content drop, we're likely going to get new blasters. But we will have to wait for more confirmation on what is coming, because right now we don't even know what's going to be in the season pass. But thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the weapons selected for the game down in the comments, and maybe let me know which one you're looking forward to most of all. And while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.